Um, we have a sub sub surprise guest amongst us today, Rabbi David Fafafelman. I had I I just met him yesterday in the in the March in DDC, and he remembered me from my Zionism speech, and then we had a conversation, and he was kind kind enough to come over here at a, such a short notice. So he's going to talk to you and ex express his views on Zion Zionism. Please come on. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, we know each other for a long time, and it's an honor for me, for us to be here and to address you all. Thank you for all the previous speakers. Uh, I must say, I learned a lot, even though I'm in this uh, situation, in this activism for a very long time, but we always uh, learn more. Uh, Brother Sami's uh, remarks was I don't know how to describe this, but maybe sad or heartbreaking. Despite all that I know from the past and I experienced with my own eyes, maybe I'll have a minute to speak about this. I was told to be very brief, and it's very difficult, but I'll try. I would like to uh, reflect on what uh, uh, Dr. Musavi said before in his presentation about the Zionist claim, which is a true concept, the promised land, God promised the land for the Jewish people, and then if I may comment on that line on the screen that says that the Nature Carta position is uh, that uh, today we are forbidden to have a land and we are waiting for the Messiah, I have to clarify. And this is very important because people need to understand this because in many times this is a conversation that naturally comes up when anybody speaks about Palestine. Nobody wants to fight God. Nobody wants to fight religion. And nobody wants to fight the Jewish religion. Then when one presents to you, well, it's the promised land, God promised it to the Jewish people. First of all, what I say always is, you have to be religious in order to use that claim. You have to follow the religion that you claim. We find ourselves in a situation which is very embarrassing, where you find a movement which is officially secular. They don't deny it. It's officially secular, a movement, a group of people that by choice refuse to follow God and refuse to follow his religion. And then they misuse that very same religion in order to justify crimes forbidden in the same religion. And this is hypocrisy. And just to explain, I'll be very brief. Yes, there is a true concept that God promised the land to the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is according to Judaism. But there is a, a, a second side to the coin that nobody speaks about. This land was given to the Jewish people on condition. There is a verse twice in the Torah which says, You should not the land should not reject you because you defile it. Unfortunately, what happened after the promise was fulfilled, after the Jewish people were brought into the Holy Land, and we believe that we were brought into the Holy Land by God, uh, not by our physical might. The Jewish people were warned by God through the prophets, unless we keep in the level of holiness God requires of us, if we won't, we'll be expelled from the land. Unfortunately, this is what happened. And all of this is full of verses in the books of the prophets, which is basics of Judaism. And here's the point. All Jews throughout all generations, without any exception, believed in a concept of a divinely decreed exile, that the Jewish people were exiled from the land after that promise was fulfilled. Now, all Jews believed in this until the beginning of the movement of Zionism over 100 years ago, where again, people, not only secular people, heretics who hated God and refused to follow his religion, they came up with this new philosophy of ending God's decree by physical means, which is blasphemy in Judaism. This is just to understand what we are dealing. Now, the, the claim of the promised land is a true concept used in propaganda 
turning the back to God and his decrees. And basically, according to Judaism, this is true blasphemy. Coming to what Brother Sami described what is happening in Gaza, we feel the pain of the Palestinian people. I visited Gaza with a delegation of rabbis in 2009 after the beginning of the siege. We witnessed at the time the destruction, the pain, the families that lost so many relatives. We had tears in our eyes as I had when Brother Sami was talking. This is heartbreaking. Every righteous person should be disturbed by just listening to these stories, seeing what is happening in the news. But it's us as Jewish people. We are way more disturbed because unfortunately, sadly, all of this is being done supposedly in our name. And on top of this, as mentioned before, sadly, our religion is being misused to justify all these crimes. <coughs> As uh, Sister Sarah mentioned before, from the river to the sea, people think that all of this is about religion, all of this is about wiping out the Jewish people. We, we have to overcome, we have to know better than that. We have to realize, all of us has, have to be very clear, there is no war, there is no, all what's going on is not because of a difference of religion. We had a difference of religion for the longest time way before the Zionist movement came in. Well, problems were already before 1948, before the creation of the State of Israel. But going back to the 1920s, before then, Jewish people lived in peace in many Muslim countries. Palestine was an excellent example. We were a small minority of Jews amongst the majority of the Muslims without the human rights, without the United Nations. The Muslims could have killed us all. And it didn't happen. The Jewish people were respected, were protected. We shouldn't fall into that propaganda that a difference of religion is a reason and a cause for conflict. We have to remember a great difference between Judaism and Zionism. Judaism is a religion, a religion only. This is an old ancient religion. Nothing about politics, nothing about nationalism. It's about the belief in God and practicing his commandments. This new, relatively new movement of Zionism is a transformation of Judaism from a religion into a nationalism, void of religion. In other words, God forbid, you no longer have to follow God in order to be Jewish. And this is a, this is a tragedy for our religion. The Zionist movement is doing everything they can to have people believe, and I'm talking about the Jewish people and the non-Jewish people, the Muslim people and the world at large, have them believe that Judaism and Zionism is one and the same. Why? First of all, they want to have the Jewish people believe that in order to be Jewish, you have to support the state of Israel. If you don't support the state of Israel, then you're what? You're a traitor. And by doing so, they gain support from so many ignorant people, people who are not really properly educated in Judaism, and they think that this is what Judaism is. And I always say, you have so many people, I'm sorry to say, I consider them innocent. After all this massive propaganda, they have no ability even to overcome this propaganda. And they don't know any better than that. I'm not justifying anything. But this, this is very sad. As a Jewish person, I see this, and I, I'm very sad about this. We do everything we can to educate those people. And then the general public, or the, or the pro-Palestinian movement, they want to drive people to confuse the two the same, to, to confuse the two, Zionism and Judaism and Zionism, because they want you to become anti-Semitic, and then they silence you. And this is something that we shouldn't allow. We have to be very clear. When we are speaking about crimes committed, we, are critis we should criticize those crimes, but we are criticizing the crimes taking place. Uh, we are not criticizing a people, a, a, a general people. And this is very important because we have to 
overcome this massive propaganda. I have to add, it was mentioned before that us or other Jewish people are humans and we are standing up for humanity. Yes, we are. And yes, we do. And we are proud to do so. But our standing up for humanity is our religion. It's our religious duty to stand up for the oppressed and to condemn those crimes, especially when it's being done in our name and in the name of our religion. And I'll conclude. When we are witnessing all what's happening, first of all, I have to add, we have to realize, and many people, you know, the mainstream media would never tell you the, right, the proper story of Palestine. They would never tell you the proper story of the opposition uh, to Israel, to the occupation. Today, with alternative media, people know much better, but it's worth mentioning this. There are masses of Jewish people worldwide, including in occupied Palestine, who are totally opposed to this occupation, not just from October 7th. As was mentioned before, this story didn't start at October 7th. This is going on for 75 years and even before. This brutal occupation, this anti-Jewish occupation, is against Judaism, and masses of Jewish people oppose it. In this whole long discussion, how our people in today's Israel are being oppressed in a terrible way just for speaking up, for raising the Palestinian flag, which was, uh, uh, I'll tell you just a, a short story that happened, uh, I believe, a week ago, where since October 7th, maybe you're aware, it, it has become illegal in Israel to mention anything about Palestine. If you, if, you, if you post a social media post with any support of Palestine, it's officially illegal. They can arrest you for that. Still in all, we had a, a group, a march going on the streets of Jerusalem with Palestinian flags. Palestinian flags were raised on the buildings, painted on the walls. People were arrested. The synagogue was vandalized. Scholars were dragged out of synagogue during studies. And this is going on all the time. This is not only now. And we have to realize what is going on. Again, coming to the conclusion, if we are truly concerned for the future, for the safety and security of all. And we say this here, we say this for the world. We stand out outside and we address our politicians in the United States and world leaders. We have to realize that the situation we are in today didn't start at October 7th. This is an ongoing brutal occupation which sadly results and resulted in all what we are seeing happening. We don't condone violence, none of us do, but unfortunately we have to face reality. As the Secretary Gen General of the United Nations said just recently, what happened October 7th was not out of a vacuum. Unfortunately, this is a result of this brutal occupation. <laughs> As a human being, as a religious Jew, I say that if we truly want to stop all of this, we have to stop this occupation in its entirety. And as human beings here in this room, we all agree. We lived in peace before all of this started. We have to use the past history as an example to teach us how the future is supposed to look like and how it can look like. We hope, we strongly hope, we pray to Almighty God that this occupation stops in its entirety. We hope that this stops peacefully with no more suffering of anyone. And at that time, we see the future, how nice and how beautiful it will be, inshallah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Rabbi Feldman of Denton and Jakarta. To do a pro pro program like this, 
you um, 